Hi there, sports fans. This is Play It Right, and we are on live. Kinito Henson along with Diane Castillo. We've got a super special show for you tonight because we will be talking about the Southeast Asian Games recently concluded in Hanoi, and this is the final word. Diane, we've got a star-studded cast of guests. We've got the POC president, Congressman Bambol Tolentino, the chef de mission, Ramon Fernandez. We've got the Gilas head coach, Chotres, for the first time to answer questions from media directly. Then we've got the boxing chief, Ed Pixon. We've got the gymnastics chief, Cynthia Carrion. And Diane, we've got a special surprise for our viewers tonight. Yes, if you haven't yet shared this link, please share it, Play It Right TV tonight, because we're going to be talking some really good stuff about the just concluded Southeast Asian Games. We have super guests and we have super prizes tonight for the first time. We are giving away prizes and the way you can win is all you have to do is like, share and subscribe and then ask a question tonight. And we are going to pick 10, 10 winners for those who have the best questions and we will be announcing the winners at the end of the show and the prizes, super ganda. Two Philippine team jackets, ASICS brand, of course. Two Philippine team shirts and shorts. Two pairs of ASICS shoes with socks. Two molten basketballs and two Mikasa volleyballs. So, yeah, wow, but may, may, may time pa to share to all your friends and family members who would like to join our discussion by asking your questions and giving us your comments and asking your own questions to our guests. So join us tonight on Play It Right TV. That's Pamigay Premio. First time we're going to do this. And we're doing this also because it's our final word on the Hanoi Sea Games. We also want to thank Diane and honor her for going over to Hanoi, giving us all those fresh insights while she was there. It's very easy to join. Adali nito, Diane. Basta mag-like, mag-subscribe, mag-share lang kayo. Tapos mag-send kayo ng comment and question. Kami na po ang pipili kung ano yung mga best questions and best comments niyo. Whether it's negative or positive, okay lang. Basta pinakamagandang question, pinakamagandang comment, yung po mananalo. Pipili po kami ng sampo. Sampo sa inyo and we are going to give away those prizes. Uh, but the end, it's got to be only in the Philippines. So, kung yung pong, mag, kung yung pong sasali sa ating contest will be from abroad, then we will give away the prize to a relative dito po sa Pilipinas kasi mahirap po magpadala ng uh, premyo sa abroad. So, basta meron kayong kamag-anak dito, pamilya, okay lang ho yun. We will uh, do whatever we can to make sure that the prizes are delivered. Okay. All right. So, on top of our show, Shampra, we have the head, the president of the Philippine Olympic Committee, the guy who's always there making sure all details are taken care of by the athletes, the teams. He goes way above his role to make sure that, to the best of his ability, our athletes are taken care of and that we produce the results. We were together with him in Hanoi. Please welcome to Play Try TV again. Congressman, soon to be mayor of Tagaytay, Bumble Talentino. Yes. Sir Bumble. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Diane. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, and the us, reason for the us. congratulations, Kong Bumble, is this. We are going to flash something on your screens to show you our performance po natin in terms of golds, silver, and bronzes. Let's put that now on our screens. Okay, 52 gold, 70 silver, 104 bronze. And that's coming from 656 athletes in 37 sports. 40 sports po yung sa Hanoi. 2019, ito po nangyari. 149 gold, 117 silver, 121 bronze. But we had 1,115 athletes and 56 sports. Kasi sa bansa natin ginawa yun. And Kong Bambol, I just want to be able to tell you that yung Hall natin of 52 golds was the Philippines' largest in 27 years, discounting po the two years where we hosted. Kasi right. Kasi hindi yung uh, 2005 and 2019. So in terms of rating performance, yung pong 52 golds natin, the highest in 27 years when we didn't host, masyadong yes. commendable po yun. That's a cause for congratulations. 
Thank you. Thank you, Sir Kenito. I didn't know that not after yeah. seven years. Yeah, ang alam nyo lang, it was our best finish since 2015. Because 2015, 2017, 20 plus goals lang tayo. Sixth place, seventh place. And now um, I know we were gunning for third, but we took fourth. But the 52 gold medals is really yes. quite commendable yeah. para sa ang, Southeast Asian Games. Ang, ang alam po after, ano, after 11 C Games, except hosting. Except hosting, yes. Ito, um, tingnan ko ho yung, ano, yung record and 52 goals, the most in 27 years, except in hosting. Um, Is that what you expected, uh, Congressman Bambol? Yes, 52? yes. Sa bilang yes. nyo, alam ko, magaling kayo magbilang. Yes, kasi sabi ko, to, to uh, second, and, second and third, uh, fourth, uh, someone in fourth, uh, sumablay lang tayo ng, ng uh, ang dami nating silver, right? 70. Yes. So, <laughs> kung, kung ang kalahati nun subjective or what, Hindi uh, ko pa na compute so sayang yon di add sa atin yon no? uh, plus uh, the upsets uh, sayang din so kasama yun sa computation so talagang uh, comfortable ako sa second and third uh, mayroon pang mga hindi nakalaro etc so kaya talaga no? kaya talaga kung, kung gaano kahirap yung 52 goals may balita tayo that yung 50 second goal natin sa Muay nagkaroon pa yata ng protesta Nang galing yeah. sa atin to be able to make sure makuha natin yung gold. Yeah, part of the ano nangyari. Part of the subjective no kasi host nga. Ang kalab yung 52nd gold natin yung last. Ang kalaban po ng uh, Philippines sa uh, Muay. Uh, anak ng isang mataas na official sa Vietnam, government official no. Mm. So go. So nagprotest agad maagap naman ng officials natin, nagfile agad ng protest, babayad doon din. Pre-replay yun. Kapapanuri ng mga technical delegates yun sa TV, yung replay. So, kitang-kita doon na talagang panalo tayo. So, sa atin binigay, inaward uli yung, yung gold. So, talagang uh, hindi maiwasan yun, being the the host. no So, maraming instances no, na siguro yung iba, hindi na lang na, na pag uh, na-file ng protest o so, pinabayaan na lang. Uh, imagine Dan Sports on the first day, six, six golds at stake. Is one gold lang ang nakuha natin on the first day. On the second day, I was there na, na nanonood na ako. We, out of six again, we got four and two silver. So, uh, eh, 40 naman talaga natin yun kung, kung sayawan lang pinag-uusapan. Parang karaoke lang yan. Parang kantahan lang yan. Pagdating sa mga Pilipino. Oo so, nga ho. Uh, in 2019, nakakuha tayo ng 10 gold medals yes. sa dance sport. Yes. Yeah, I, and I know in the papunta doon, I was with them actually on the same flight. They were they were expecting 12. They were expecting to sweep all the no, all the events kasi nag-training sila sa Europe. Pero uh, Kong Bambol, yung mga hometown decisions na nakita nyo personally when you went there, how much of a factor was that? sa medals natin. Oo oh, oh, naman, malaki rin ng malaki ng malaki rin ng effect no no. Uh, well, talagang ganoon kasama sa sa pagwo-host pero kung meron mang overkill, edi overkill naman masyado no na 100 plus uh, is enough. Uh, maraming ano, maraming uh, subjective nga nakakatakot eh. even kay sa ano even kay sa gymnastics kay kay Kaloy, Kaloy. Yeah. kay Kaloy the, the last gold niya uh, mm. after his uh, world class uh, performance uh, ang taas ng score niya siya na pinakamataas then uh, after uh, ilang countries pa then last ang Vietnam ang tagal lumabas ng ng score ng Vietnam so nagreklamo na nagreklamo tayo, officially, sinasintya hanggang sa in award na lang, two golds Philippines and Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, tay. To follow up yung sinabi ni Dayan uh, Kong Bambol, yung po mga hometown decisions, medyo nasaksak tayo sa puso, dun po sa boxing. Nesty yes. Petesio at saka si Iris yes. Magno, natalo po sila, at saka yes. si Josie Gabuco. Yes, yes. So, buti na lang uh, convincing yung tatlo na hindi na kayang ano hindi na kaya mga stop fight na yon so hindi na kaya uh, uh, ano yung pa ng mga judges no pero bigat talaga pag ano pag pag uh, ang kalaban mo host no? and they can feel yeah. they can feel too 
tayong mga and, other participants, tigi-tigi sa lang sila, tiga-tigalwa, they are allowed. Even mm-hmm. in all martial arts, judo, karate, uh, kickboxing, etc. Marami yung story ah. Yeah. Uh, sa kickboxing, meron din. We have six finalists going for gold. So, dalawa lang nakuha natin. Last two. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, zero. Na, yeah. Hindi namin maintindihan yung scoring. Pero yeah. in spite of that, in spite of that, uh, Sir Kenito and Diane, in spite of that, with that 52 goals, ah, it was a very oh, successful, oh. successful uh, participation natin. Uh, kalahati na lang yung delegate natin from last 2019. Right. Uh, short of training because of the COVID, bubble, etc. IPF Mm-mm. policy and maraming upset, plus the upsets na hindi natin nakalain na nasyak tayo, nasyak ang buong bansa na natalo, yeah. ganun, natalo sa sabihin na natin, natalo talaga sa sa basketball if it's a mortal sin, di ba? Uh, I don't know. So, uh, in spite of that, upsets and short of training, and uh, half na lang yung delegates natin, 52, very successful pa rin. Yeah. Kong, let's talk about some of the good things. Like, for example, gymnastics in 2019, we had uh, three golds, and then now we went up to seven. Bowling, matagal tayong walang gold medal. After 11 years, we had two golds this time. And so, um, what were some of the lessons that were learned from their success that other NSAs can learn from? Yeah, nag, nag-push na talaga yung NSA, yung two NSAs na yun. Nag-push na, nag-level up na sila talagang after the Tokyo Olympics. Nag-push again na to develop their athletes. No? Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, wish, I would like to congratulate ano, both uh, gymnastics and, uh, and uh, bowling. Uh, so, oh, after the Tokyo Olympics, Oh, uh, I'm sorry po. Uh, meron po tayong comment from a uh, viewer from Andre Rafa Fernandez. What program or benefits would be good for the government to implement for Filipino athletes? What program? Of course, uh, uh, good for the government. They, they have to start the grassroots program first. Mm-hmm. Then sustain all, all the needed uh, 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 all the needed improvements uh, to sustain. Uh, pasok na yung mga bago ngayon, mga scientific, you know, mga sports science. And, well, on, on our side, sa NSAs, alas lahat ng bansa may foreign coaches. Eh. Mm-hmm. So, wala yes. namang masama kung, wala namang masama kung three months before or six months before Let's all uh, get those or hire those uh, foreign coaches. For foreign those, coaches for all for those uh, NSAs that can afford. Well, they have, de ba? Uh, pero paano naman yung iba na kailangan kailangan natin? So hopefully, ito sa matutukan ng ng uh, makonsider ng uh, incoming uh, officials of uh, PSC. Uh, Dayan, your last question. Um, no, I wanted to ask um, Congressman Bambol, I know you're having a POC General Assembly end of the month, sa May 30, if I'm not mistaken, tama po ba? Yes, basta po hindi mag-conflict sa incentive ng uh, government ng Malacanang. So, we will uh, I will uh, be updated kung kung matutuli, kung kailan yung uh, incentive uh, uh, courtesy call sa Malacanang. So, kung nag-conflict, I will just reset it on the Ah, okay. So, magkakaroon ng pagbibigay ng incentives. Yung 300,000 for gold, 150 for silver, and 60 for bronze. Correct? Yeah, by law. By law. Yeah. So, yeah. I wanted to ask you, sa POC General Assembly, what will you be taking up, sir, that uh, well, related to the Southeast Asian Games? Of course, we will uh, recognize, congratulate all those uh, winners and NSAs. And we will announce kung merong ding incentives coming from POC. Remember last uh, 2019, this is the first time the POC gave incentives. Uh, uh, piliting ko naman na magkaroon pa rin ngayon. Pangit naman kung hindi na nasundan yung 2019. So, mm, so you're going to give your own incentives? So, hindi naman ganun kalakihan, but uh, meron pa rin. Oh, it, it matters talaga. Oh, talaga. Um, yeah. Tom Bumble, my last question uh, for you would be, um, Yung po mga 
sports that delivered gold in 2019 na hindi po nakadeliver this year, they are canoe kayak, cycling, karate, rowing, uh, rowing oh, shooting, at saka wrestling. Sila po yung mga nakakuha ng gold in 2019. Tapos hindi po sila nakakuha ng gold this uh, Southeast Asian Games. Special mention po yung badminton because it is only this sport that did not make any medal at all for the Philippines in Hanoi. Ano po nangyari dun sa mga sports na hindi po nakapag-deliver? Well, uh, of course, uh, hindi na-sustain yung whether it was affected by the COVID what, pero in short, kailangan mag-reform na rin ng, ng program. Kailangan uh-huh. i-overhaul na rin yung mga, mga program nila. No? Uh, baka naman kulang na sa ano sa developmental program o, mm-hmm. o kailangang igalawin na i-calibrate na and everything so aside from that it's kahit alam natin na talagang lumakas na yung ibang bansa yes right. oh, oh. Ibang bansa. yes, so, yes. Kung yes. Nag-develop na yung ibang bansa dapat tayo wag mm-hmm. mm-hmm. dapat uh, adjust din tayo uh, mm-hmm. 10 times so, di ba mm-hmm. hindi lang twice 10 times kasi yung mahirap mm-hmm. habulin mahirap yeah. habulin mahirap maghabol so, yeah. ewan ko, volleyball ba? Eh, hindi ko rin man, na-monitor ang volleyball. And, yung volleyball... Meron, meron ang bronze sa beach volleyball. Okay. Yeah, two beach. bronze. Pero, pero sa beach. indoor po, wala. Indoor yes, wala. So, mm-hmm. so, lahat yan, dapat uh, uh, mag-usap-usap na uli kami ng uh, other NSAs na let's check and calibrate our different programs. No? Baka naman, may, ay bakit nagawa ng bowling and uh, gymnastics? Yes. Well, yeah. super last question po. Ano po yung comment niyo tungkol sa basketball? Yes. Basketball, uh, for me, sa akin lang, it's a mortal sin. Sa parang matalo na yung iba, wag lang basketball. Diba? Parang ganun ang, ang, ano, ang uh, clamor. So, wag natin, hindi pwedeng it's a wake-up call. Lagi na lang bang wake-up call. Every every sea game is a wake-up call. So, enough of the wake-up call. Diba? Don't, don't belittle the the other nations uh, remember meron na rin silang naturalized so import so mm-hmm. baka nga umabot sa ano yan eh sa uh, circuit nito then baka umabot na yan sa dahil sa clamor ng tao baka umabot na sa Senate and Congress yan sa so, na bakit nagkaganon so do we need a law na na dapat priority ang national dapat ipag national team at, yes kahit pa nasaan kahit pa anong laro kahit pa anong schedule dapat priority superseded ng mga contracts nila dapat mm. mauna yung yung uh, national yung sa bansa it, it's Interesting. not not only in basketball it should be applic- applicable to all sports yes. welcome bambol interesting thank you very much thank you very much for your time uh, perhaps your final message to our viewers and uh, again to thank them for their support Kong bambol yes uh, of course uh, it's still a very successful uh, sea games no after uh, breaking all ang daming records na na-break at saka nakita natin yung mga pricing new athletes no so yeah. exciting pa rin so we have to move on hindi naman laging lesson learned kailangan na uh, ano ba tayo tulog na lang at laging wake up so so <laughs> kailangan uh, come on guys uh, let's move on move and uh, wag nating sayangin yung ano yung uh, yung momentum natin no? So, again, Words thank you for all yeah. the supporters. Yeah. Words of wisdom from Congressman Bambo Tolentino. Maraming yes. maraming salamat po sa inyo, POC President. And again, your magic touch was very evident in the Hanoi Southeast Asia Games. Maraming thank salamat you. po. Thank you. Maraming salamat. I'm sure starting tomorrow, he's going to start working on the 2023 Cambodia Sea Games yes. para mas dumami pa. <laughs> God bless po. Thank you. Oh, well, Diane, uh, that was a wonderful discussion. But we've got somebody else now to speak with. And he is no other than the chef de mission of the entire Philippine delegation in the Hanoi Southeast Asian Games. And he will be here to discuss his experiences. He is a former national basketball player. So he knows, he knows what it feels like to be a national athlete. And now being a PSC commissioner and the chef de mission, Ramon Fernandez is going to be share, sharing his views Let's welcome him to our show, Don Ramon Fernandez. 
Senor Kirito and uh, Madam uh, Diane. Uh, Hi, Mon. Magandang gabi sa'yo. Hi, Diane. Welcome Good back evening. to the Philippines. Welcome back to you too. So, uh, Don Ramon, you know, it was, it, I think you were the last person to come back, but you stayed for the closing ceremony, right? And you were one of the first people in Hanoi also to set up everything. Um, overall, ano pa yung experience and thoughts from the Southeast Asian Games that just concluded? Uh, I'm very happy and proud of uh, the achievements of our athletes there. You know, as uh, has been mentioned, uh, quite uh, 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 maraming beses na, na this is the best finish ng Philippine team outside the Philippines to see games. So since 1983, I believe in 1983, it was, if I remember right, it was in Cambodia, mm -hmm. say, uh, Indonesia rather. But uh, we had about 40 plus uh, medals lang, no? itong highest haul natin so far. No? So I'm very proud. And yes, I was the first man in and the last man out. That's the uh, job of uh, the CDM. No? So uh, I'm really very happy for, the, for our athletes. And Don Ramon, we prepared a graphic to be able to show the extent of how successful we were. And let's show this graphic now, if you can please comment for us. Ito okay. po ang ating Philippine standings, um, Commissioner, in the SEA Games. Since 2005 up to 2022. Now, you notice that the asterisks are the years when we hosted. That right. means the fourth place finish, Commissioner, is the highest finish we have had since 2005, discounting the two years where we hosted. And I think that's quite an achievement, Commissioner. I would, yes, I would believe so, uh, Kinito. As I said, uh, this is the best finish of a Philippine team uh, outside the Philippines. No? So mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have to give it, this is all about the athletes and their performances, Kinito. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were to... Uh, look back at the at the games. Which sports now you felt most excite excitement, and which ones also na disappointed kayo? Uh, obvious na yung disappointment. <laughs> uh, Dayan, huwag na, let's not rub salt this wound, no? Uh, but uh, uh, the athlete that I'm really very excited about, uh, which is see a very very bright future future uh, gold medalist olympics is vanessa sarno no at of 18 weightlifting years, uh, yes at 18 years old uh, she broke three sea games record and uh, as mentioned by congressman fentebella she's just five kilos short of the olympic olympic uh, record no so grabby and potential of course, such a young uh, age yes yeah at least counting uh, the performances of uh, Hello, Yulo, no, and of course, Hadelin Diaz also, and other gold, gold medalists. But uh, for me, I believe ito ang pinaka may chance tayo sa gold sa Olympics. Ang boxers, of course, meron din. But alam nyo, maging, hindi, maging subjected din yung judges sa boxing kasi ito sa so weightlifting, weights lang ang kalaban mo. Eh, no? Buhatin mo yung 100 whatever kilos, ikaw mananalo kung ikaw pinakamabigat na, na bilang. Eh. Madaling i-judge, no? Even any of us can judge it, no? Uh, Commissioner, during the basketball game, in the final between Philippines and Indonesia, everybody saw that you went over to Jun Marfajardo and whispered <laughs> something to him. Can you share with us, ano po ang sinabi niyo sa kanya? Uh, yeah, because uh, I noticed Jun Mar, uh, medyo uh, may kailangan pa siyang i-improve sa defense niya sa inside. Uh, napapansin mo kinito if you can review the tapes pag merong point guard o off guard na maiwanan yung defensa niya at lay lay up si John Mar lalapit lang at sa baba lang niya uh, to try to stop him no she was telling him as soon as the player lays up you just jump high up there doon mo i-block sa gilid ng ring at ng board doon mo aabangan yung bola no so uh, well, uh, he didn't get that opportunity again, 
But uh, yun, ang, yun ang sinabi ko sa on the defensive side. Well, that's the first time we've heard um, that. But that, that comes from sage wisdom. That's from the experience <laughs> of Don Ramon. And I'm sure yeah, because, Jomar will remember that the entire his, the remaining career. He's already 6'10", Kinito. Bakit titingkayad lang siya, mabablock niya doon sa taas yung, yung tama, bola. Tama, eh, no? tama, diba? tama. So, uh, it's, there are simple, basic moves that uh, are very effective. It's very effective. And if you were to, if you were to, uh, of course, it's everything is easier in hindsight, right? If you were right. to, if you were to look back at that game and knowing the outcome, uh, what do you think we could have done to beat Indonesia? Um, I've said this in the previous, I think, world that uh, dapat bigyan pa ng play si Fajardo sa baba, no? post up siya po. There should have been some post-up plays for Junmar Pahardo dahil kayang-kaya niya yung dumay defense sa kanya. Malay mo, o kung ginawa natin ang ginawa yun, again, as you said, hindsight, no? Kung ginawa natin ang ginawa yun at pinost-up siya, baka nag-foul out pa yung naturalized mm-hmm. player, right? Because he was mm-hmm. in foul trouble going into the so many minutes of the game pa, no? So, yeah. But uh, again, uh, yung three points natin, hindi masyado nung connect op sa kabilang team naman uh, hot na hot oh so well it is what it is that's how the cookie crumbles every now and then so again it's a lesson for us that uh, really hindi na natin pwedeng maliitin ang uh, especially Indonesia and Thailand no uh, they have improved tremendously i've seen both games and they really have improved no may mga players na rin silang naglalaro sa sa Amerika, no? So, dapat talaga the best possible lineup we can send, we should send it. Mm-hmm. What about your experience, uh, Commissioner, having been a national athlete yourself and then now being the chef de mission, did you feel any sort of uh, parang deja vu na nanggaling na kayo doon in previous international competitions tapos ngayon, iba na ang papel din nyo. This time now, you're trying to encourage athletes. You're trying to inspire them. And that, dati dati, parang ganon din ang papel niyo as an athlete. Well, sa tingin ko kinito mas mas mataas ang pressure sa akin during these games, no? Nung wow. Nung naglalaro, <laughs> nung naglalaro kasi ako, nawawala yung pressure because nandun ka naglalaro ka. But this one, you are hoping and praying, lakad ka ng lakad. <laughs> na mananalo yung mga atleta natin hindi lang sa basketball but in all the other sports no so mas uh, may pressure sa akin no personal pressure ko naman no uh, and watching the other athletes from all other countries Vietnam Thailand Indonesia and our athletes uh, compared to the time when you were competing anong masasabi niyo sa mga atleta ngayon and what can our, what did you notice that our athletes can perhaps learn from the other countries? Well, basically, uh, Diane, it's really all about training, uh, preparation of the athletes uh, for this tournament. So it boils down to that, no? how prepared are we? So, ito nga, na experience ga natin yung COVID. That's the biggest factor for me, no? Because in 2019, prior to the SEA Games, we were able to send practically almost all our athletes for exposure tournaments and uh, training abroad. Mm. No? Uh, we spent more than a billion uh, sending them all over the country. So, uh, as I keep on saying, an athlete is only as good as the competition. No? So, you have to make them compete to some mga atleta na better than them so they will learn and uh, improve, level up on their performances also. No? So uh, they'll be back, the NSAs, uh, especially those na uh, hindi masyado successful, uh, they have to go back to the drawing board. No? Uh, but then again, uh, uh, time and again, I've been saying uh, uh, sports development program needs a lot of mula. No? So yeah. that's what we have to find out, find first, really. Uh, Commissioner, 
um, again, because of your experience as a natural athlete and now as a uh, chef de mission, it's easy to go to an athlete who just won and celebrate. Mm-hmm. Pero ano right. po yung sinasabi ninyo sa isang atleta na natalo o kaya nabigo sa kanyang competition? Kayo po, being chef de mission, what's the thing that you can tell such an athlete who is depressed, disappointed, kuminsan nadadaya pa? Yes, madali, madali sabihin niya na kinito doon sa mga nadadaya. No? Okay. Doon sa, doon sa legitimate na natalo, natalo taga, talaga. Uh, all you can really do is be positive uh, in your outlook and what you say to him uh, to, to learn from uh, this experience and uh, hopefully uh, he can push himself uh, uh, further para mag-improve pa, no? Uh, I always tell them, you know, you have already reached this point uh, of your careers up there in the national team. Staying up there is even much harder. You mm-hmm. need work to stay up there for a long time. No? So, ganun mga ganun na lang kinito. May question okay. po Aviation27 is asking, what is your favorite moment during the SEA Games? Number one, I think uh, si Kaloy, Kaloy uh, Yulo talaga kinito. Mm-hmm. Oh, nung nanalo siya, uh, para ako nakakita ng baby na kinarga ko sa, oh. sa tuwa, sa tuwa ko. Ano? Nakita ko yun. Uh, Nakita ko yun. <laughs> limang, limang gold at dalawang silver yung pinanalo ng, uh, ng uh, bata natin. No? Oh. So, uh, coupled with his height, uh, <laughs> yeah, and he won the he won the all around, which is a big thing. Na, na, nakita ko yon, Don Ramon, nung pinikap pa si uh, Kaloy. Nabigat ang kaba? Mabigat. Siya pa nagsabi, <laughs> sabi, sa, siya pa nagsabi, sir, ang bigat ko ha. Napan, napansin ko nga, nung, nung binuhat ko siya the second time around from his legs, medyo bumiga yung yung baywang ko ng konti yung likod ko. <laughs> kasi puro muscle, puro muscle yeah, kasi siya. Solid. Maliit siya but grabe yung solid. muscle niya. Kaya mabigat. <laughs> yeah. Here's a question from John Jusang to Don Ramon. What system were your team was using during your time in an international competition? Today, they bad dribble drive kay coach Chot. Ah, uh, well, uh, the the Dribble drive din naman kami noon kinito eh. You cannot penetrate or you cannot uh-huh. pass without dribbling, no? Uh, matagal na namin ginagamit yan. But of course, we have set plays, no? Depending depending on who your opponent is, uh, you scout them, try to find what their weaknesses are, and uh, design, the coach would design a play that he would feel will be effective against a, a certain team, no? So, uh, the basic plays kinito where you can... Uh, uh, maximize the talents of uh, of uh, your players. No? Yeah, well, Ganun lang. Yeah, again, many, many thanks, uh, Commissioner Ramon Fernandez, for your time. And, of course, your experience having been a national athlete and now Chef de Mission. I'm sure all the athletes were inspired by your presence. Diane, you have anything to say? To, uh, Thank to you. It was so fun to watch all the games with you, get nervous together, and uh, of course, celebrate the wins of our athletes. Sana maulit. Sana maulit. God yes, bless Diane, and thank you. Thank you very much. Don Ramon. Thank you very thank much you so for this much. opportunity. At uh, ipagpatuloy natin, ipagdasal at suportahan ang, uh, ang mga atleta natin. Mabuhay ang atleta ang Filipino. Thank you, thank you, Don yes, Ramon, and congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Job well done, Chef Division. Thank you thank again you for gracing our show. Okay, mga kaibigan, dalawa na po ang guest ang napakinggan natin, POC President Bambol Tolentino, and then the Chef Division, Ramon Fernandez, and now, the man of the hour, Diane, our very good friend, <laughs> someone who uh, has a lot to say, I'm sure, about the performance of our men's basketball team in the Hanoi um, Southeast Asian Games. Here he is. Someone whom I'm sure you'll want to ask questions to. Coach Chot Reyes himself. 
Hi, uh, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Hi, Diane. Thanks for having me. Hi, Thank you John. for always uh, giving us the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, well, first of yes. all, I guess our, our initial question is, what's the feeling like we lost the gold to Indonesia? Coach Raiko Toraman said, one loss does not mean the end of the world. What is your feeling? Well, uh, we felt... I personally felt hugely, hugely disappointed as if uh, as I know that I have uh, let uh, a lot of people down. And that is why, you know, I uh, immediately took responsibility and accountability for the defeat. I, I, I blame no one. And I, I, uh, I, I really feel very, uh, like I said, uh, disappointed. Uh, and I, I really wish that uh, the result were... Different, but like Coach Riker said, uh, it's not the end of the world. And and in fact, as disappointed as I was, and as I and as disappointed I know the Filipino people are, uh, life goes on. Uh, believe it or not, with Coach your Shark kind of yeah, go ahead, please experience and having been through so much in your career as a coach. Uh, I don't know if I'm sure you've looked back at the game. What? What could you have done, do you think, at that point, given you, the, with those players that you had in the situation that Bolden played in the final game? And, you, you know, what if, the, if you were to re, replay any point of the game or do anything different, what would, what would it be? A lot of things. Uh, I'm, the, I'm my own worst critic. Uh, I, I review every time after every game. Uh, the things that we could have done and, and a lot of things uh, there were some technical things that we should have exploited uh, uh, it, it's too technical to explain here uh, but uh, uh, CDM Ramon Fernandez had some very excellent points I was I, I listened to your interview to his interview we really appreciate his being there um, I should have uh, used the bench the other players a lot more uh given maybe francis lopez uh, uh george go isaac go uh some some playing time and will navarro uh i mean there were there so many things that uh, i could have done different um coach shot uh, tell us about bolden i thought that he should have fouled out with six minutes to go um you were telling me that maybe you should have fouled out at the end of the third quarter but uh he stayed on. He made a difference. Someone told me that Bolden was offered to the Philippines before Indonesia. Is that correct? Uh, Bolden was, you know, we've, we've always been looking at a, a lot of different players. And Bolden was in that list. Uh, but remember, I, was, I came into the picture only in February of this year, right? Yes. So uh, when... Uh, we were talking about uh, a potential or adding another naturalized player uh, or having another big man to the pool just to give um, Ange Kwame uh, a tough competition in practices. Uh, Bolden was in the list. But before we could even act on it, uh, we were informed right away that sorry, too late, Indonesia already naturalized him. So, uh, mm -hmm. like I said... Maybe if I was here earlier, we could have done something about it. But when I came in in February, we saw Bolden was available and we inquired. Uh, right away, we got the response that, sorry, Indonesia naturalized him already. Yeah. And um, I know that in Hanoi, you were telling me that you weren't taking any team for granted. They've all improved. They've all have, you know, acquired foreign coaches and leveled up. Was there anything and that and you said before the Indonesia game you were prepared with or without Bolden? Was there anything in the that surprised you about the play of Indonesia in your final game with them? No, uh, we knew Bolden was going to play, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because he was there in the hotel, he was there in the gym, so we knew that they were re preparing him for our game. And uh, the only difference, and we had an idea of how Bolden plays because we had film from his games in the NBA and the G League. The only thing was we didn't know exactly how they he would fit into the place of Coach Raiko. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that was uh, 
the blind spot that we had going into that ball game. But again, still with the way Indonesia played, how well they played, how well Bolden played, I think we uh, still could uh, we still could have had the chance to beat them. A good shot. Uh, I was looking at the performance of the U.S. team in the Olympics, and uh, you know they won uh, um, seven straight Olympic gold medals, and then they were stopped by USSR in 1972. They have uh, won also seven of the last eight Olympic gold medals, but they were uh, dethroned in 2004 by Argentina, and mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. only got the bronze medal that time. So, para nakikita ko, no? Sometimes if you're holding on to the crown for too long, um, you, you, it can't be forever. And the <laughs> Philippines, of course, has been the champion in the Southeast Asian Games for almost forever. Is that a little consolation on your part, or is not that consolation? Uh, not at all. Uh, I know these things happen, you know, conceptually, you know that it was bound to happen. But, you know, I really hope and I really wish that it didn't happen under my watch. However, having said that, I know that every time you go into competition, the possibility is always there that uh, you're going to come out on the short end. I mean, that's just what sports is about, right? Uh, there is a winner and there's a loser. And uh, uh, in as much as we didn't want it to happen, unfortunately, uh, it did. So uh, there's nothing we can do but face uh, up to it. Uh, learn from the experience and and move forward uh, face the consequences face the backlash uh, i know there's such great uh, backlash out there uh, thankfully I'm, I'm i'm plugged off so i have no idea <laughs> but uh, but you know uh, in a certain to a certain extent it's understandable because because we lost you know it was uh, i was the coach who i was the coach when the team lost so um for unfortunate as it is uh, like like uh uh chef de mission ramon fernandez said uh, is it what it is what is it uh, it is what it is well looking but forward <laughs> coach Shot, uh we've got the fiba asia cup coming up in jakarta in july what kind of team will you be sending to the fiba asia cup uh in our plans uh it is the it's going to be composed mostly of the uh uap and ncaa players because the pba is going to be ongoing at that time and at the same time we wanted to really have a, an opportunity to expose you know carl tamayo sj belangel dave ildefonso uh even guys like uh, maybe uh, james spencer of up uh Justin Baltasar, we really want to be able to ex expose them to higher level Asian competition. Uh, and uh, the end in view is going to be to prepare them for 2023, for the World Cup in 2023. So uh, that's, uh, that is the plan. Uh, we're on live. So I'm sure Coach Shot will uh, get back to us immediately. Yeah, mobile. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah Coach Shot, please go ahead. Please go ahead, Coach Shot. Yeah, and my back. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, like I said, it's that group composed mostly of the uh, younger players in in the UAB and NCA, uh, together with Dwight Ramos, uh, Thirdy Ravenna, and I think Kiefer will be available as well uh with francis lopez uh that uh, we are planning to send to the uh, fiba asia uh, competition ah, okay um make make comment dito from marie villa don't video call and drive coach i hope you're not driving coach no 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 i i have a driver <laughs> okay yeah. uh, no, make concern i just came from a workshop i just i just uh, run uh conducted the leadership workshop so oh, okay. i'm on my way back yeah. Uh, Coach, uh, here's a comment or a question from Mark Cantenza. When will you release the pool for the 2023 World Cup? On the top of your head, can you name five each from the PBA college ranks and from overseas deserving for the 2023 World Cup? Wow, that's a, that's a big question, Coach. Yeah, well, like you said, it's still a long ways. But, you know, there are very obvious choices. Like Obviously, we want Kai... Soto to be there. We want uh, Jordan Clarkson to be there. 
I've already said that I think the future is uh, Ferdi Ravenna and Dwight Ramos. So I think these are very obvious choices. Uh, uh, June Mar Fajardo is certainly is going to uh, merit uh, inclusion in that group as well. Uh, and other than that, like I said, we are using the time now to take a look. Uh, who else uh, can can be is worthy of, of making that squad? But uh, like you said, it, it's a work in progress. We're still a, a, a pretty long ways uh, from that, from making any final determination. Coach Shot, uh, one of the things that a lot of the fans observed, especially in the Indonesia game, was our lack of consistent three-point shooting. How do we address that problem? Um, I know that uh, Raiko, Coach Raiko told me that uh, someone like uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic doesn't leave the gym until he makes 700 three-point makes. Uh, is that something that uh, maybe we can ask our players to do? Um, do you have a mold in mind of a player who can be like an Alan Kaidik resurrected? Yeah, remember, uh, the, the good thing with the Indonesia program is they started very early. Their camp was, I think, already two or three months already in the making, uh, in, 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 the, in progress. We did not have that luxury because I don't have these players for long periods. So we can't... Uh, have situations where we're shooting a lot of shots. Uh, in a perfect scenario, we'd love to have that. I think that's number one. Number two, uh, our three-point gunners were supposed to be Dwight Ramos and Robert Bollick. And mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they had to beg off. And that's why our outside uh, shooting really suffered uh, in, in, the, in this uh, competition. Uh, because the guys that we were banking on to be our main uh, three-point threats, uh, aside from Matthew Wright, of course, we're, we're not there. And that's, again, Robert Bollick and, and, and Dwight Ramos. Uh, that, I thought that was a, a big blow to our uh, uh, three-point shooting. A Coach, question it, here. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, the end, make question, Dito, from e OD1 Kenobi. What is the greatest lesson learned from this Indonesian defeat? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's not really a lesson because we've been saying it before and again, echoing what uh, uh, Mr. Fernandez said, uh, that uh, our, our Southeast Asian nations are already, uh, have, if not caught up, are already very close to, to our level and we really need to um, put in a lot more preparation and uh, time and send uh, as much as possible the best team uh, that we can form to the Southeast Asian uh, competitions. Um, the other lessons that I learned are pretty technical in nature. I thought our team needed a lot more speed. Uh, I thought, uh, well, it's already been mentioned, the value of the three-point shot uh, again. So, uh, you know, these things are... But I think the most important thing really is the level and the amount of preparation uh, that we put into uh, the Southeast Asia competition. Bayan? And talking about preparation for upcoming coach, are you going to now insist that you have your team together earlier? Because that has been uh, the playing together or get commitments earlier since you may have a little more time now is that possible or um, we have been insisting all along naman eh, but it's just really not possible and we, we we understand the situation you know we wanted uh, we we couldn't get the UAP and CAA players in because their their season was ongoing when we left for the Southeast Asian Games some tournaments, the PBA season is ongoing. And that's why we have already sat together and put a program where the focus is to get all of that preparation. It's, it's like we're saying, okay, uh, let's reserve all of the training time for 2023. Ibig sabihin, na natin lahat nung time. Okay, if UAP, NCAA, PBA, with your seasons ongoing, we understand, uh, but then in 2023, and I think we have that commitment from the PBA to really give us, uh, uh, right now, um, our discussions with the Commissioner uh, Willie Marshall is at least a minimum of three months preparation, three months training for the World Cup. 
So, uh, uh, you know, we, we've been insisting, we wanted to have a long uh, preparation and training periods. It, it's just not possible given the setup of, of uh, competition in the Philippines. Uh, secondly, it's really difficult to cope with the windows, right? the window system of, of mm -hmm. the FIBA now, where it, it's, it is so sporadic that there's always something going on during a window. Uh, so right. like like this like this coming window, the U, the uh, PBA is ongoing. So now, fortunately, the UAP and NCA is done. So we are going to send the UAP and NCA uh, mm -hmm. players mostly to that. So um, what's the good thing now is everyone is kind of preserving so that there is a commitment na o oh, todo tayo buhos tayo 2023. When 2023 comes around, yan, everyone, even all of the players, those who are not here, those who are not in the country, those who are in Japan, everyone is making a commitment. Three months, full training preparation for the World Cup. Mm, oh, that's good news. That's good news. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's another comment here. Sir, what can you say on the online clamor to bring back Coach Tab Baldwin as head coach? Uh, well, yeah, like I said, um, uh, I did not apply for this job. I did not volunteer for this job. Uh, it was given to me because uh, Tab had uh, had resigned before me. So whether uh, the, the, there's that, I know that there is that clamor to bring him back. I am a big believer in that. Remember, I was the one who brought Tab to the country. Uh -huh. uh, so I know his capability and the kind of coach he is. Um, unfortunately, things did not pan out uh, as as planned. Uh, so uh, uh, whether the, the, I understand there's that clamor, uh, but at this moment, uh, I serve at the at the pleasure of the SBP leadership. Uh, I've been given this job, I've been given this mandate, and I'm going to do uh, my my best uh, to fulfill that mandate. Yeah. Chot, I wanted to have a follow up to the to the game against Indonesia. We don't mind. Like, what what kind of uh, what kind of words did you have for the team, the locker room before you came out? What uh, how what did you tell them, and what words did they express to you? Uh, very few. You know, Diane. There are some moments where no words are necessary. And I think that was that's one of those moments where everyone was just so down. Everyone was just so uh, despondent. You know, just uh, the look uh, when we look at each other. All the words were spoken actually uh, after the medal ceremony. Uh, oh well, right after the game, we had stayed there. Nobody was talking. And when the yeah. bus arrived and we were about to leave back to the hotel, Junmar spoke up. Very mm -hmm. emotional, very eloquent. And Junmar said, sorry that we didn't get the job done. But he said, thank you, coach, for giving me the opportunity to serve the country again. Uh, I really cherish this. Maraming maraming salamat. And, and I think that is the, the predominant uh, uh, sentiment of, of all the players. And then... We went back to the hotel to dress up. We went back to the gym for the medal ceremony, and then back. Then went straight to the airport for our flight back home. Right. That's when oh. now the individual players one one by one uh, came to me and approached me, and every single one of them. I think the first one was Francis Lopez to say how grateful he was for the opportunity. Everyone was very grateful for the opportunity. Everyone was very disappointed that we didn't get the job done. Uh, and and I think that was the the predominant uh, sentiment. Nice. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Gadean. For the crowd support, na mga pinoy din sa basketball, di ba? Coach, remember during the game against Vietnam when they were like, yeah, the whole game was <laughs> screaming for Vietnam, but we had pockets of passionate Filipino fans that were. So faithfully there, and I know that the players and yourself appreciated them. So, you might want to have a few words for our kababayans in Hanoi. Yes, not only in Hanoi, especially those in Hanoi, of course, who 
went out of their way to cheer for us. But all of the Filipino supporters, uh, um, this is what keeps us going. As like you said, there's a lot of online. Uh, uh, we're, I, I personally, I'm being. I know that I'm being pilloried and vilified left and right. But what keeps me going is the support of those people who go out of their way to send me messages to say, you know, uh, just just giving their, their words of support. People like you guys, Diane, Kenito, you know, every time you send those messages, uh, and I, that's why I reply, I really appreciate those words because uh, that's what keeps us going. We know that there is a lot of uh, hatred and backlash, but we also know that there's a lot of love and, and support. Yes. Uh, in the end, that's the only reason why we're doing this. We really like to do this because this is the only way we know to serve our country. And uh, uh, that's why for us, it, it's it's really uh, para sa bayan. And, and uh, we to thank uh, the, the supporters. Uh, I mean, uh, Chef Demision Fernandez was there. Uh, yung sinasabi niya, na yung pressure niya, naglalakad siya. He was worried about all the athletes. He was there for us for the basketball game, but he was also talking to us about the other problems in the other sports. So I was there witness firsthand how much he was really uh, looking out for the welfare of the Filipino athletes. So, um, you know, because of being, there's uh, the, the what makes it worthwhile for us is is the we know that we're doing it for for people like you, for for our leadership uh, in the SBP. President Alpan Lillo, Chairman Manny Pangilinan, Vice Chair of Ricky Vargas, the people who are constantly behind us and supporting us. And, and uh, you know, we we know that we've disappointed a lot of people uh, and, and hopefully we can count on their continued support. Well, thanks very much, Coach Schott. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your candid comments. And we wish you the best of luck. We know, like the Phoenix, we're going to rise again. And we're going to be on top once more in Southeast Asia, maybe even in the Asian circuit. And then onwards to the World Cup in 2023. The best of luck to you. Coach Shot Reyes, thank you for your time again. Thank Take you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Game. God bless. More power. And now, Diane, we've got uh, two special interviews coming up. First with Ed Pixon of Boxing and Cynthia Carrion of Gymnastics. And now, Diane, let's talk about boxing in the yes. season. And no less than the Boxing Association of the Philippines president, Ed Pixon, is with us to tell us what happened in Hanoi. Diane, you were in Hanoi, so you saw some of those fights. But we'd like to hear from Ed before we get uh, Diane's views. Ed, how do you rate our performance of the boxers in Hanoi? Team to watch. Yeah. Well, we've got the graphics uh, prepared for our viewers um, Ed, to show our medalists. And there it is. For gold, Rogen Ladon, and that's his weight class. Ian Clark Bautista, Yumir Marshall. Silver, Irish Magno. For bronze, Palikte Pianyar, Gabuko, Pasuit, and Petesho. And Diane, we were expecting a, a gold for Irish Magno, especially since she was the only boxer out of our team of four that didn't come home with a medal from the Tokyo Olympics. How did you feel, Diane, when that happened? Well, the well, of course, we all really wanted Irish to win, right? And she was super psyched. And I spoke to her when she, after she won and got into the final, she knew she had a tough challenge against that tall Vietnamese opponent, uh, Vietnam being the host country. And then 
she had lost to the Vietnamese prior. She said that she thought they had a strategy uh, figured out for her, but she fell short. So uh, I wanted to ask Ed how he felt about that final of Irish against the taller Vietnamese. Well, well, we always thought that uh, Pam, that's her name, no? Pam, the Vietnamese uh, girl, uh, is a very good boxer, but mm -hmm. she also is uh, uh, not averse to uh, playing one up punch. Uh, because of her height and reach, uh, you have to go in and, and fight her inside. Mm -hmm. What she does, whenever you attack, whenever you go inside, she holds. Yeah, you know, she and 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 the unfortunate thing about it is that the referees let it go. They 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 allow it, you know? and so she doesn't get she doesn't uh, get reprimanded, and she does it. She did it several times, you no, know, multiple times during the bout, and that frustrated Irish. The the, mm -hmm. the, the game plan was was very good. Uh, and and uh, Irish was able to score some points going inside, but you know, uh, Pam would always tie her up and and uh, or wrestle her down. So uh, it it became very frustrating. But she is a very good boxer, and uh, uh, we acknowledge that that uh, she she did uh, uh, enough to to win. But in, that included one upmanship. Yeah, and you were telling me in uh, Hanoi that, okay, so the team trained in Thailand, right, for this, but you still, I mean, don't get me wrong, three goals on the final day is, is, is super good for us, but I know you wanted to get more, right? And I think you started to tell me that the training in Thailand was good, but you would have wanted uh, something more to leading up to the SEA Games. Can you tell us about that? Well, uh, we really appreciate the accommodation that was given us by Thailand. But before that, uh, we actually had to decide on Thailand because we weren't getting uh, much support uh, here uh, locally. You know, uh, our, our uh, usual training center in Baguio was occupied by another sport. And they let us in. Uh, you know that was that was uh, renovated uh, three years ago, and it was only open this year. But we weren't the first occupants. Uh, right. When they let us in, there was already somebody. There were already people there, and it was a challenge because uh, they had their equipment set up and we couldn't touch it. Mm. And and you know there were so many challenges. Yes, so yes, we, yeah. We had, we had to go to Cagayan de Oro. Uh, mm. We were fortunate that uh, Mayor Oscar Moreno allowed us uh, entry into his uh, boxing gym. Uh, we had to. We had to really. I didn't know that. I didn't know you went to Cebu yeah. Pala. We had to go to Cagayan de Oro because we couldn't use Baguio. We couldn't use Rizal Memorial. Uh, uh, and then, uh, when was this? At the beginning of this year? Early this year. Yeah, okay. February, March. Mm -hmm. um, we were in Cagayan de Oro, and then we had a couple of uh, big guys that we wanted to uh, to train for possible inclusion in the lineup, including a, uh, a heavyweight. But uh, the PSC denied uh, our request for them to be included in the roster. And the, the excuse, the reason given was that uh, it was, they were in new weight categories. Mm. Uh, these were not new weight categories. They, they've been there for a very long time, but we didn't have boxers in them. So it, 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 it's befuddling why uh, you were being given a hard time. Uh, getting then when we went to Thailand, uh, yeah. We asked for financial assistance and they didn't give it. Uh, so we had to ask MBPSF to uh, step in and uh, spend for us. We had to realign some funds which were uh, actually earmarked for some other programs uh, in boxing. 
but we had to spend it uh, because we were cramming for the Sea Games. We actually crammed for this. That was the uh, that was for you're talking about the f uh, expenses for your training in Thailand. Yes. So how mm -hmm. long was the Thailand trip? Uh, maybe about five to six weeks. I'm not sure now, but five to six because weeks, there yeah. was also the uh, Thailand Open. We were right. there two weeks before the Thailand Open, mm -hmm. and then we decided we asked the Thailand uh, Boxing if we could stay after the tournament, and they very graciously mm -hmm. agreed. So. Uh, from Thailand, they went direct to Hanoi. Can you right. tell us what sport occupied uh, that camp in Baguio? Was it karate? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sa akin, yung karate, walang, ano, no? walang, med walang gold medal. But, uh, well, we, we saw the gold medalists in our, uh, in our chart that we showed earlier. And we had uh, three, of course, si Rogen Ladon, si Ian Clark Bautista. There we have, we have it again. And Yumir Marshall. Can you tell us... Um, if you were to choose, um, Ed, who was the most outstanding fighter in our team? Well, I feel they were all, you know, uh, uh -huh. outstanding, all three of them. But uh, if you look at their uh, opponents, um, Roger Ladon had the more difficult ones. Uh, first, he had the Thai uh, boxer and then the hometown uh, favorite uh, from uh, Vietnam. So. Uh, there were tough fights that uh, Rogan uh, faced in, in, in the SEA Games, but he displayed such composure and uh, confidence uh, the entire time. He, he actually acted like, you know, he had no doubt whatsoever that mm -hmm. he would be able to win the gold. And uh, I really admire him for that. So talking about the Southeast Asian Games, we have to mention the sport from the Philippines that gave us the most number of medals, and that is by far gymnastics. Yes. And we have with us our super good friend, Miss Cynthia Carion Norton. Cynthia, congratulations. You were not just you didn't just contribute the most number of medals to the Philippine golds, but you were also the winningest country in the entire gymnastics competition at the SEA Games. Correct. You beat host Vietnam. That's amazing. Yes, that's amazing, and that is really a fantastic feeling that I got because I was okay. so sure that Vietnam will do something. That they would be on, they will win over us. Even even Coach Mooney was saying, "Mom, be careful. You watch the scoring system of Vietnam. Be be careful. Be careful." I was on top of them all the time. You know, they knew. Oh my gosh, we have so many stories about that, Kenito. Like, yeah. okay, so we won. First of all, we won four golds, uh, three silvers, and no, hey, sorry. Gold. Seven oh. golds, three silvers, and... Oh, hold it. Yeah. Uh, seven golds, seven four, golds silvers, four silvers, and three bronzes. And that's right. a total of 13 medals. And that's a jump, Diane and Cynthia, from what gymnastics performed in 2019 when we hosted. And that was yeah. when we got three golds, five silvers, and four bronzes. Now, we're talking artistic, rhythmic, and aerobic gymnastics. So yeah. big congratulations because, Cynthia, you are the valedictorian. Yes. Congratulations, everybody, for the Sea Games <laughs> for the Philippines. Kenita, I wanted to mention that uh, you know our athletes did tremendous there, but Cynthia, explain to them how the scoring in the gymnastics competition, the Sea Games, was done manually. Okay, Manual it wasn't. Yes, it wasn't like in the past Sea Games where after the performance you would see the score right away electronically flashed. It was not that way. There was a lot of delays. And so many times, Kinito, Cynthia would be okay. right there with the judges, watching them score, making sure that <laughs> they got F to protect our gold, silvers, and bronze medals. So it was really tough, right? Yes, really tough. Especially when, when Kaloy in the, in the high bar, in horizontal bar, Kaloy made three, three turns and hit the bar. And uh, Vietnam didn't do that. And everybody looking knew that Kaloi should go the gold also, waiting, mm -hmm. waiting. And 
They said, do well, both are going to get gold, Vietnam and, and Philippines. I went there. How can that be? But you should be happy. He said, you're also getting a gold. I don't care, but I want to know what is right and what is wrong because he doesn't deserve the gold, the Vietnamese. I know you're just putting him there so that they'll get more medals. Oh, they were quiet. I, I said, no, 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 the gold, but... I'm not happy with your, your judging. You know? That's true. In the high bar, there were actually two gold medalists. Two anthems were played, mm -hmm. Kaloy and the Vietnamese, which, wow, yeah, that was... Uh, it, actually, in the, in, the, in the beginning, remember, Kaloy thought he even got the silver. He didn't know. He thought yes. he got silver. And then yes. after that, later on, when he conferred with the... With the with the staff there, they said, oh, you also won the gold. So, yeah, those are just some of the many things that uh, that Cynthia had to do there. Cynthia, before the SEA Games, um, you, you already knew about this situation? Yes. Yes. Uh, we, no, we did not. I know that Malaysia, uh, when we were in the Philippines, okay, when they were, we were doing a scoring system, I know that, that, that Vietnam got very close to to Malaysia, the people who are doing the scoring for us in the Philippines, mm -hmm. close to them and told them we are going to do the same in 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 Vietnam. Vietnam, mm -hmm. us the same. Yeah. Can you offer us the same uh, deal? Okay, so they were saying okay, and I think I don't want to judge, huh? Mm -hmm. And I think also that's why Kaloy got only those medals when he served some goals there. Because they were giving it to Vietnam because they knew that the next Olympics would be in Vietnam and they were getting the contract for the scoring. Mm. Never did. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, Kaloy won five gold medals in the in the Sea Games. Um, a big jump from his two in Manila. Yes, and he still wasn't satisfied himself. He wanted seven. What was no. but it he exceeded your your expectation, right? Yeah. He exceeded, but I knew, I knew, I didn't want to put pressure on him or, you know, pressure on anybody. I knew he'd get at least uh, six goals. I really felt it. The mm -hmm. only, only one he couldn't get a goal is, the, is I know, two, five goals because the the pommel horse, he cannot get pommel horse. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was doubting about the rings, but he got in the ring. He got the rings. You know? Yeah. That was fantastic. That ring. So, tama, tama lang your expectation. You expected five gold medals from Kaloy, and he delivered five. But I think yes. Coach Mooney wanted more. <laughs> yeah, Coach Mooney uh, for the for the Paris Olympics, mm -hmm. he wants uh, overall. He's going to. He wants gold overall. Mm -hmm. Or, and vault and P bar. He wants four golds for the Olympics. Wow. wow. That's, that's going to be an amazing feat. Well, as it is, Kaloy was the most bemedaled gold medalist in the Southeast Asian Games in Hanoi. He's that's the only right. Filipino to bring home as many as five gold medals. Yeah. And for someone but, who's, but, uh, uh, tw what, 22 years old now is Kaloy? Yes, just completed. It's uh, amazing. By, in the Olympics, he'll be in his peak of 25. Mm-hmm. That, that's the peak of the... Remember, uh, Diane, Mr. Butcher told you, don't worry. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Peak, you know. At the Tokyo Olympics, Mr. Butcher, who's like the technical, one of the technical directors of uh -huh. the FIG, said he, he, he seemed very confident, remember, Cynthia? And I think that's why also, that's what also gave Kaloy a lot of confidence, although he left Tokyo without a medal. He said, your gymnast is so talented. He said, I have no doubt that he's going to do, that he will win a gold medal in the Olympics. Because I think Nakita rin ni Kaloy doon na in the Olympics, I mean, he had the, he seems to have the most raw talent, the most uh, skilled uh, technically. It was just, yeah. I think, the nerves and the execution. And But definitely we saw Kinito in the SEA Games, of course, different level. Kaloy has really, really matured a lot. In yes. terms of like dealing with pressure, his determination, his focus, I was very impressed and very happy for him. And do you see when he, he when he got when he finished, he kissed the public, which he oh yeah, 
yeah. how nice and i and he said yeah that's and i've been asking him to do that to acknowledge <laughs> Public. Yes. But Cynthia, tell I, us the feeling that you had when you were the one who put the gold medal around his neck. For what event was that? Was that the all around? That's the uh, yes, that's the all around. Okay. I, because what so what was the feeling that you got when you huh? put that gold medal um, all, oh, around yes. his neck? Oh, I hugged him. I hugged him mm -hmm. tight, and I said, "Congratulations, Kaloy, You know, I really am My, so proud of you. And but I understand, I understand, Cynthia, you were not supposed to award the gold medal. Yeah. Somebody else asked you to do it. No, Can you tell us that story? Uh, Watanabe, because it's first Watanabe is supposed to do the medals, and then mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do the dolls. And then there's another guy who was going to do the, fla the flowers. Okay. Watanabe, the, the medal around the bronze, he went up to the silver. And then when he went to Kaloy, he called me and he said, you you put it on Kaloy. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful. And, I, and so I, I was able to hug him, you know. Sweet, and then I sweet. Mr. Watanabe gave the doll. Huh? Or you also gave, Mr. Watanabe gave the doll. Yeah, instead I gave of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but tell us, Cynthia, outside of Kaloy, we had some nice surprises. Aliyah Finnegan, what about yeah. Nikita Besana? Getting the bronze and Finnegan uh, getting two uh, two gold medals herself, and yes. uh, the Philippine women's team getting a gold. That was medal. historic. We haven't yes. won a gold medal in well, we haven't even participated in the women's team competition. I think in ages, right, Cynthia? But tell us about uh, Aliyah Finnegan and how we were able to recruit her for the national well, team. She was in the uh, American team. She was okay. part of the American U.S. team. U.S. team. And so she asked us if she could be part of the Philippine team. Of course, and we were so thrilled, <laughs> you know. So, but but they I, so I went when I was in the General Assembly. I asked the General Assembly, "What's the process of how we can get Alea to the to become a Philippine member?" Instead of, "Oh, that's a long process." They said you have to first of all ask Alea to write you a letter to say that mm -hmm. she's willing to compete for you. And after she, you receive the letter, you write to the uh, American Association of Gymnastics and ask them if they will release Alea. And mm -hmm. then we then you write the Federation and see if we will release her. But I, 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 I feel we will release her we, and I get all these medals. And I'll, I'll war I'm warning you, he said, if once Alea wants to go back to the United States, she cannot anymore, it'll take her years. So she better make sure that she really wants you know, because we say yes, that's it. She is a, Filip a Filipina. She competes for the Philippines already. And no she did, and she won a medal in the Pan American Games, Kinito. But yeah. she, I mean, we met her mom there, very sweet Filipina mom, right? Her, her dad, who helped her, unfortunately passed away. But um, she's a really nice girl and so chill right and not and so very so, so sweet and her coach was there she 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 competes for LSU Louisiana State University her american coach was there and yeah winning that gold in the team and in the vault was fantastic and well i felt that she should have won the gold in the beam i don't know how you how they the feel, how you feel about that cynthia <laughs> The mother was very, very upset. And again, I went to, <laughs> to the judging and I went to Rima, who's my good friend. I said, Rima, what's wrong with you guys? She's the best. <laughs> you know, that's just really, no, she, she had all kinds of excuses. No, I don't accept these excuses. So I had to uh, text her later now and apologize with my attitude of really <laughs> with her, you know, that I, I, I felt. They did something wrong there, you know. Yeah, but will Aliyah be able to compete for the Philippines in the like next Sea Games and other Asian Games? Yes, yes, of course. And and I wanted to qualify the Olymp for the Olympics. If she can qualify, at least we will, we will expose her. It's mm -hmm. good for her exposure, you know. So that's, I, I think that's wonderful. Qualify also. Try to qualify for the Olympics. I said, you know, all the 
every world championship we have for women, you 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 come you enter. We will put you in. You know. And the right. but she will, but she will continue to train in the U.S. Yes. And play in the NCAA, compete in the NCAA. But, but uh, she also the mother also wants eventually to come to the Philippines. Mm. You know. And, show her like they were here only for five days and they enjoyed themselves so much they went to Tagaytay I told wow. Agnes Tolentino Agnes can you sponsor them I, I'm not there but I we will call Medi we called Medi Ramsey Medi Ramsey really in, entertained them they brought them all over Tagaytay they loved it oh so they actually came who the Fenigans yeah they, they actually came. made it to Manila Yes, and, and also Summers. Well, and that's our episode. It's probably the longest show we've ever produced for you on Play It Right TV. And Diane, we've got now our list of winners. And my understanding is we've got over a thousand comments and questions from our viewers from the start of our episode. And now, as promised, we will give you the list of our winners chosen for their best comments and questions. Diane, can you help us with this one? Okay, thanks everybody for getting so involved in the Southeast Asian Games. Uh, so we have 10 prizes today and we're gonna read out the winners. This, don't worry, this won't be the last time we're giving out prizes, okay. Winning ASIC Shoes and Socks, Sports Buff TV. And then our second winner winning a Philippine team shirt and shorts, A6 brand, of course, is John Juzang. Our third winner, winning a Mikasa volleyball, is Nicole Indeo. Number four winner to receive a Molton leather basketball is Michael Brandy Bermudez. And number five, winning another Mikasa volleyball, Christelle Astong. Can you our next five winners? A molten leather basketball for Sherwin Elioreg, a Philippine team shirt and shorts, ASICS brand, of course, for Adionobi Kenobi, ASICS shoes and socks for Jeffrey C., a Philippine team jacket for Clint Erestain, and Philippine team jacket for Aviation 27. Thank you very much for your support. And all of the winners, please get in touch with us on Facebook, and we will make arrangements for your sizes, for your shoes, and for your shirts and for your shorts, and then uh, we'll uh, come up with an arrangement where we either ship the prizes to you, or maybe you can come over to a place where we can give you the prizes so we can meet you personally. And Diane, another super show, but I think this one was really special because we had five extra super guests talking about the SEA Games, and of course, you were there to experience what happened. Yeah, well, uh, we had so many things to talk about, diba? Ang dami pang pwedeng pag-usapan about the just-concluded Southeast Asian Games and so many so many more stories to tell. But yeah, ang ganda ng mga insights that we got, of course, from Bumble Tolentino, Ramon Fernandez, Chot Reyes, Cynthia Carion, and Ed Pixon. So thank you so much to all our guests and thank and you to all our before, viewers. Yes, of course. But before we leave, we want to tell you that... Uh, we have an extended interview with both Cynthia Carrion of Gymnastics and Ed Pixon of Boxing. We will be showing that to you next Wednesday because we have something special for you on Friday and Sunday. Part one and part two. Part one will be on Friday. This is an exclusive interview with Kai Soto and his team. That would be NBA agent Joel Bell, his trainer Jeremiah Boswell, and his manager, Patty Scott of East West Private. That'll be part one on Friday, part two on Sunday. Only here, the entire interview on Play It Right TV, Diane. And now we're already getting thanks from some of our winners of our prizes who are so excited. Wow, you're going to love those products when you get it because, well, we love ASICs, of course. They're all top brands that we're giving you. And hope we will be announcing our future shows where we will offer more prizes again para yes. mas enjoy ang panonood ng Play It Right TV. So before we go, we want to thank our sister company, Sona Corporation and playitright.com. 
if you want to check out some products that you would like to purchase, they have all the brands that we talked about earlier, Asics, Smolton, uh, top brands of basketballs, volleyballs, shoes, socks, apparel, you name it, they've got it. Playitright.com. Hope you can check it out and share it to others as well. Well, thanks again for viewing our super special episode. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Hit that bell button so you get notified every time we have updates. This is Kinito Hansen for Play Try TV and my partner. I'm Diane Castillejo. See you next time. Thank you. Maboyang Atletang Pinoy. Congratulations to all our athletes. See you next time.